Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sawmill Barn at Southern Indiana Sawmill. Um, today what I have is this uh, beautiful cherry log that we're going to be sawing. Now, this log is actually one of many logs that I have in the yard here that I have to get done in the next few days. And uh, as you see those pictures there, you see that some of them are beautiful, um, other ones are a little bit more crooked. And I got all of these cherry logs from actually another sawmill not too far down the road from me. And they run a big circular mill and I bought some of these cherry off of them in hopes that I'm going to get some pretty good lumber. Today I'm going to be sawing one of the bigger ones that I have. And this log right here is about 20 inches in diameter. Now the average logs that I like to saw are right about in this range, about 15 to 20 inches because they yield the best kind of lumber and generally you get enough out of them that it's worth your while. Now this one right here, I have high hopes for. It does have a little bit of a bend in it, and so I'm gonna have to work that out as we go, which means the scrap is gonna be a little bit higher. Um, but again, I'm hoping that we get some really beautiful lumber out of this cherry. Cherry is one of my favorite woods to work with as a woodworker. It smells nice, it machines well, it finishes fairly well, and it always yields a beautiful result. You know, oddly enough, cherry has went down in value uh, in comparison to some of the other woods in my area, such as white oak and black walnut. But <laughs> for my money, cherry is one of the best that you can possibly get. How about you guys? Do you like cherry? Well, let's go ahead and start cutting some and see what this log looks like inside. Okay, before we get started, don't forget to put your egg on. What is that? Ear protection, gloves, glasses, egg. Safety third, guys. Let's get started.
All right, y'all, so far, so good. Now we're getting close to the center of this cherry log. And there's some good and some bad. Look, right through here is some beautiful crotch figure. Now that means that there was a limb or something at some point that was growing out of one side of the log. That's the result of that. But also there's some not so good stuff. So if you can see this here, there's a crack that has developed and this is not uncommon for cherry at all. And down here, I reckon this is either from felling or this was from uh, wind damage. We call that shaking. And uh, there's the shadow from the beam in the barn. If you're wondering why there's a line in this video, that's why. But uh, generally when this happens, there's uh, one of two things you can do. If you see an end of a log and it looks like this, 100% of the time, you hear that? 100% of the time, it's going to have cracks going through the lumber. Now, if it's only in the inside, you can deal with that because then you can make a choice like we are today. Now, the two things I'm talking about are the two reasonable options, which is keeping this log and continuing cutting. Uh, the first thing that you could do is continue cutting the same way that you were. Just keep stepping down and cutting all the way, accept the cracks for what they are, and then move on with life. The other thing that we can do is to take this cant, which is what we call these, of course, once we get all the bark off them and they're square, it becomes a cant. We could flip this up and cut the other way. Right now the cracks, if the board is sitting like this, are going this way. If we flip it, the cracks will go with it and cut that way. And that might be a little bit of a better option for us, just to see what we can get out of it to salvage some of the material. Now again, I don't know what caused this, um, if it was uh, shakes, wind shakes we call it, where it gets these cracks in it from the tree just constantly being pulled back and forth by the wind. Or if it could be probably from felling where they were cutting this down and the whole tree came down. More than likely uh, a log this big came out of a tree that would have been three or four sections of this same tree. I think I actually have one of the other sections in the yard out there. And what happens is when they fell it, if it hits too hard it can, it can crack and break apart. Cherry is a little bit more sensitive that way than some of the other logs when you're cutting them. And so uh, how you fell a tree is a big deal um, because it affects the way the sawmiller cuts it, therefore it affects the way that the lumber comes out and affects what you have to work with if you're a woodworker. Well, what I'm gonna do is go with option B since I am not gonna throw this away because I still think there's a lot of valuable timber in here is I'm gonna flip this cant up and then we're gonna continue cutting it out and then we're going to see what this all looks like when we get it done. Well, after that last cut, believe it or not, I can hear some of you screaming at my channel. And I'll tell you why. Because what I just cut there had a live edge on it. Now, 
Here's the thing, guys. I know that slabbing has become extremely popular in the last several years. But here at Southern Indiana Sawmill, I do what I feel is best for what I want to sell and what I want to cut. I don't have anything against those of you out there that are cutting slabs, but I'll tell you, a lot of it should be in the firewood pile in my opinion. <laughs> now if that doesn't start a controversy, what will? I want to know what you guys think about that. Put that down in the comments section. Are you a woodworker? And would you prefer your wood to be four-sided or would you rather work with live edge material? Put your comments in the comment section below because I really would be interested to know what you think of that. Anyhow, what we're going to do here is trim all of our uh, cutoffs that we had at the beginning and that's going to finish out this log. Then I'm going to show you the beauty that was inside of this log when I get done with that. Well, let's get to it. Well, all right, guys, this is the cherry that we've cut. I'm not going to douse it with water for two reasons. One, I don't think that's really productive for making good lumber. And uh, number two, it's going to freeze tonight. <laughs> and so I don't want to get the wood soaking wet only for it to freeze and crack everything. You know, I don't know what this looks like to you here, but I'm always amazed to see just how much lumber you can get out of one log. Now, all of this was cut two inches thick, or the vernacular for our industry would be eight quarter. And uh, as you can see, well, I've got it stickered, so you have to look past that a little bit, but there is some beautiful, beautiful wood in here. And then there is also, so here's the one we tried to save. If you can see, there is a crack going through that. And that may be unsellable. You know, anything that goes through the kiln is only going to get worse. It's never going to get better, so those cracks will get bigger and crack the wood clear out. But there might be a little something in there that could be saved. But all in all, not too bad, huh? Well, one of the things that I have been getting a lot of requests for, not from YouTube, but from customers, is thicker wood. It seems like everybody that calls me lately wants something that's two inches, three inches, four inches thick. And uh, the trend has went towards thicker and thicker material to build with. Um, now I still do cut quite a lot of four quarter and six quarter, but I haven't cut as much eight quarter and beyond. A couple reasons for that. One is, is that everything that I sell is kiln dried. And so if you're taking something say over three inches thick, it's almost impossible to get that dried all the way through. Um, the other reason is weight. <laughs> um, somebody has to continually move these things and that somebody unfortunately is always me. And quite honestly, it's just a preference of mine, um, even with equipment that I have, that I don't necessarily like moving stuff that is three inches or four inches thick. Now, of course, if somebody uh, has a request and they want me to cut that for them, um, no problem at all, right? Um, but generally speaking, I try to stick to the uh, four quarter to eight quarter type of material. Another reason that I try to avoid doing too much slab work and too much over width work. Over width would be something say over 10 inches wide and we did have some that were definitely over that in this stack. Um, but a big reason for that is, is that most people do not have big joiners and big planers to accommodate that. And if you're in woodworking you know you have to have a way of flattening that. And slab flattening jigs and stuff like that have become all the rage and they can be effective, but your average person is not going to go through the trouble of making a big slab flattening jig and all of that just for a couple boards. I mean, that's got to be more of something that they're really into to do that. And so I try to stick to material that works for the woodworker and makes it a little bit easier on their lives. Having been a woodworker myself for over 20 years, I appreciate when things are easier to begin with, when I don't have to do all the cutting down and all of that. And so that's another reason. Well, the next video is already right beside me here, guys, and this is a big, huge cherry log. That's right, <laughs> another cherry log. This may have even been from the same tree that we just cut. However, this one is even more complicated than the one we just did, and it's going to involve some challenges to get it cut, which is something I know you all love to see, which is when I get myself in a little bit of a pickle. Well, as always, to my subscribers, thank you for watching and remaining faithful and loyal uh, throughout what has been really a tumultuous season for many of us. 
And for those of you that are new to the channel, please, if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe. So guys, look out for this next video after this one that's coming out of cutting this even more complicated log. And as always, God bless you all. Take care.